Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 187, Some If, The Visible Rose. All right, welcome back. I was uh, doing a seminar in Fort Myers, Florida yesterday, and John was in the audience and he had a question. He said, how can you do a sum if that only sums the visible rows? Okay, so right here is our database, and the sum if is simple enough. Look through A5 to A24. See if the answer is yes. If it is, add up the corresponding cells from B5 to B24. That all works. But then John was applying a filter. So we had a category over here. And data, uh, let's just use the auto filter uh, to quickly apply the, uh, the filter. So there are all of our B cells. And if we want to add up just the yes cells that are B cells, uh, then that should be summing to 100, but this formula is not working. So the question is, how can we do a sum if that only looks at the visible rows? And I said, all right, well, clearly, the only thing I know that's going to ignore visible rows is the aggregate function, right? The aggregate function. So we're going to sum uh, number 9, comma, and then here's the important part, ignore the hidden rows, right? And then I just need to find some way to get an array in there, and I know the higher versions use an array, like uh, everything above 11 uh, for that second argument use an array, but um, you know, will an array work here? All right, so what I what I decided I was going to do, I was going to say, all right, we're going to take all these numbers here and multiply them times a Boolean, so look through all of the words over in A5 equal to yes, all right? And what's going to happen is, well, these are going to be numbers, right? And these are going to uh, evaluate in a series of trues and falses. And then when we force Excel to multiply the trues and falses times a number, the trues become one, all right? So anything that doesn't say yes is going to evaluate to a zero. And anything that does say yes is going to evaluate to the sales, all right? And then we just have to do a control shift enter. Ah, oh, son of a gun, it doesn't work. All right, maybe just an enter. Oh. Tell you what, Mike, I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to throw it over to you. Let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Well, you know what? Aggregate, yes, that's one of two functions that can ignore hidden or filtered rows. Now, aggregate was invented in Excel 2010. Before aggregate, we had the subtotal function. And the subtotal function can also ignore hidden rows or filtered rows. Now, the same problem occurs with subtotal as with aggregate. If I choose function 9, that will just avoid counting filtered rows. If I choose 109, that will ignore hidden and filtered rows. So 109, I would like to do that. But guess what? This subtotal function runs into the same problem as the aggregate. Reference argument means you cannot have an array operation there. So what do we do? We're going to use the offset function to simultaneously get each individual row, which subtotal will, in essence, create individual subtotals. And this trick I learned years ago from Mr. Excel's very own Mr. Excel message board. Now, offset, it needs a starting point. So I'm going to click in the first cell, comma. And then offset goes down or up a certain number of rows to get a particular value. I'm going to say just as an example to see how this function works, go down six rows, comma. Columns, that's how many rows you want to subtract or add. We don't want to subtract or add any, so I'm going to leave it blank. Now, offset. Notice I already have some rows hidden there, three rows. So offset, if I tell it to go down six, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So offset should be going and getting that 30 in cell B16. If I highlight it and hit the F9 key, I can see, sure enough, that it's doing exactly that, Control-Z. But what I really want it to do is simultaneously get every single value. So in rows, I'm going to use the row function. Highlight all the way from 10 to 29, close parentheses. If I highlight this row, 
which is now doing a function argument array operation, will just deliver an array of the numbers 10 to 29, so F9. There we go. Ah, but we really want to tell offset to go down 0, 1, 2. So we can get offset 0, offset 1, and so on. If I can subtract 10 from all of these, I'll have exactly what I want, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Control Z. Well, now I simply minus the row of the very first cell in that range. Close parentheses. Now in the rows argument, if I F9, there's an array of all the positions offset needs to offset to get each item individually. Control Z. That is an array in rows, so it will force offset to deliver exactly one cell for each item in that range. And that will be different than just the complete range, which subtotal cannot handle. Comma. Columns, we don't need any. So close parentheses. That whole offset, if I F9, look at that. Right now, it's delivering every single cell, including Right there is three items that are hidden. I can see them 30, 40, 30. But that's because I haven't dumped this entire resultant array into subtotal. Control Z. I come to the end, close parentheses. And now when I F9, watch this. There we are, 0, 0, 0, because subtotal is ignoring the hidden, or later we'll see that it will ignore filtered rows also. Now, I would like to further eliminate some of these numbers. For example, the second number, 50, we can't have that because it says no right there. So I'm going to put this resultant array inside of some product and then multiply this array times another array of zeros and ones that will represent yes, That'll be the 1. No, that'll be the 0. Control Z. Now I put it inside of some product. That's array 1. I need to come to the end comma and highlight the column with the yeses equals, and I have the criteria up here. Now if I click on array 2 and F9, trues and falses, but some product can't see those trues and falses. So we need to convert them to 1s and zeros. Control Z. So I'm going to use any math operation to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. I'm going to use double negative, because in general, that tends to be the fastest and most efficient. Now, I could have taken that array and directly multiplied it by the first array. Then we would just have that multiplication in array one. But I've chosen to have array number one there. Then some product will multiply times these ones and zeros, F9, and we'll get exactly what we want. Notice right now, 1, 1, 1 means yes, yes, yes. But those will be matched up with the 0, 0, 0 from the subtotal for the hidden rows. Control Z. Now I can come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I'm hiding over here. If I come over and hide, right click, hide. I should get exactly a total of 50 and 10. Control Z. Now if I turn on the filters with Control Shift L, now I can come up and filter just to show B. And there we go. 30 times 3 is 90, plus 10 is 100. So there, F2, a great trick I learned years ago from the Mr. Excel message board, subtotal with offset to get our sum ifs, which is really sum product with a criteria here to add only the filtered rows. And one last thing about offset. Remember, we were talking about aggregate and subtotal couldn't handle an array operation right there. But we do have some array operations inside of offset. Offset delivers something that Excel can interpret as a reference it works to disguise the array operation as a reference that, in our case, subtotal can understand. All right, I'm going to throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Whoa, Mike, that is one awesome formula. No wonder I couldn't come up with it there uh, live at the seminar. I was headed in completely the wrong direction. But while you've been working on that, I'm still absolutely convinced that aggregate, uh, there's some way that I could use aggregate to solve this. Uh, but I, 
if if I can't use an array here uh, because this is five and not one of the ones higher than twelve, uh, then I still feel like there should be some way to do this. And check this out. Here's what I'm going to do: is I'm going to use a helper column. And you know, as I started to think about this one, this is uh, this is a lot like finding out if the refrigerator light turns off when you close the door, right? You're not going to know. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an helper column with an aggregate function, and that aggregate function is going to sum, ignore the hidden rows, and what am I going to sum? I'm going to sum just this row, just this one row, and we will copy that down. All right. Now the big question is, what is the answer to this when I filter to just the Bs? What is the answer? Are those hidden rows returning zero or not? Well, I don't know how we can find out. Well, actually, I do know how we can find out uh, because we have a secret way to look inside uh, that cell. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to press Control Ditto to bring that exact formula down. And then instead of pointing to column B, I want to point to column C like that. All right, and we'll press Enter and then apply a filter. All right, and let's see 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 10. 100, it's working. So apparently, in those hidden rows, the rows that we can't see, like for example, row 7, here we can do it down here, equals C7, aggregate is returning 0 because it, that hidden row, that row itself is hidden. Alright, there you go. Kind of cheating with that helper column, uh, but it, at least it's something that I can understand and probably even knock out again uh, without having to look at the formula. Alright, wrap up from today. Question from John. Do a sum if that only adds the visible cells? Uh, my first pass, I was trying to pass an array into the aggregate function, but that fails. And Mike came up with an awesome solution. Use the offset function to point to each row. Use the subtotal to see if that row is hidden or not. And then sum product uh, to multiply, uh, you know, is it yes times the result from the subtotal. Uh, my second try is like checking to see if the refrigerator light goes out once the door closes. I added a helper column to each row uh, that says an aggregate of the cell in this row saying, ignore any hidden rows, so that'll change to zero when the row gets hidden, and then point the sum ifs at that column. Well, there you have it. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.